This is February 29th, uh, 2024. This is the Refinery Mirror Community Call. Um, welcome, everyone, and to everyone who's watching afterwards. Uh, we have a fairly short agenda. Um, we'll go through it. Um, that'll be it. Perhaps time for questions. Um, I want to kick off with announcing the auto scaling support in the helm chart. So, Jan oh, beat kind in, on GitHub um, was kind enough to contribute, or like push this, uh, push this work over the edge and get it to uh, merge some domain. So now distributors, rulers, query frontends, and queryers can be auto scaled. Um, there's still some rough edges around how the migration works. Um, and I think it doesn't quite support deployments with requested CPU of less than one core. Um, but we'll be working through these and tracking all the progress in, in an issue. Um, yeah, so this was released in the weekly 278 ham chart release, um, and will be part of the 5.3 release i'm not quite sure when it will be stable but um it will be at some point um Craig, do you want to take the histograms point yeah uh, so about native histograms uh, which is kind of a new uh, way to represent histograms uh, in a more efficient series so uh we've been uh, busy working on some optimizations, uh, and by we, not I don't just mean the Mimir uh, developers, but like community members and other uh, companies. Uh, and so some optimizations have landed uh, regarding the Prometheus PromQL engine um, that were done by the community, and also uh, specifically for Mimir. So shout out to uh, Yuri, one of our team members. Um, there's probably more to come because I do see some, I mean, we see some opportunities to, for further optimizations, but the code is so complicated that every time we try to change something, it literally takes weeks to, to iron it out and, and get it merged, if not longer. Um, the other thing that is worth mentioning that in Prometheus, there's a new function related to native histograms, which is the histogram average, uh, which simply takes and uh, divides the sum by the count, which you know sounds very trivial, but if you do it with regular PromQL, then you have to calculate those two separately, basically, and it's not very efficient. So it's a nice uh, shortcut and makes everything a bit more consistent because we were just missing this function. Um, and then the last thing is that uh, we started to work on adding more by turning more of the Mimir emitted histograms into native histograms. Um, this has a long, long time been coming, but uh, you know, now, the, now it is in, in progress. Uh, so I hope by the next uh, release, we can have all of the at least latency related histograms emitted as native histograms as well. And we can start uh, updating our dashboards, alerts, recording rules to take advantage. Uh, so you can actually start the migration. Uh, yeah, and I haven't wrote it in the agenda, but obviously we need to document this. So uh, it's not super exciting, but a lot of work at least. Cool, thanks. Um, Sean, do you want to talk about the Strap series? Um, not sure we can, I'm not sure I have much to add. Um, but yeah. Um, Sean brought up bringing down the stripe size um, in the Prometheus TCB head. So all the series are divided into, I think by default, 16,000 stripes. Um, so that access to them is, so that we get less lock contention. Uh, I think it's a, like the value of 16,000 is something we inherited from Prometheus and there it was optimized for a lot more, um, a lot more concurrent writes, a lot more series. 
But in Mimir, there is one TZB head per tenant. So when you get a lot of small tenants, um, having very large strap size has, has like diminishing returns. So you end up paying for memory, which doesn't help you in any way. Um, yeah. I checked in one of our clusters and the stripes, uh, the strap series were about 9% of overall heat. So if we just drop that, uh, we might be able to get some memory back. And is this, um, sorry. No, go on. So is the suggestion to use a different number or to make it configurable or what's the idea? It's already configurable. So I think I think that's pretty solid. Um, ah, okay. I, I do wonder, I've been trying to dig through the old uh, Prometheus commits to see where the, the 16,000 default like was chosen and if there was like a reason for it. Um, but I cannot find, uh, I found the commit, it was added, but I can't find a PR uh, for it. That would be like indicate, um, it was back in 2017. And it's just been like that forever. So, um, but yeah, in my experience, that's like a wildly high stripe count for um, concurrent access maps. So I, that's what just, I was wondering if there was a reason for that, that massive number, but I cannot find it. Um, but I think dropping it down to, I mean, in our case, we're running many thousands of tenants. So it's using um, you know four or five gigabytes per per ingester, um, so we could probably drop it down to like one twenty eight or something like that, and I doubt we'd see any additional contention. Um, we'll probably have to do a, a few rollouts to 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 verify that we don't see any performance like degre degradation there. But uh, I expect. Um, I mean, and then you'll get diminishing returns, right? Going from 16,000 to, to 1024 is a huge benefit, but then, you know, going down to 512 won't, won't change as much. And you'll you only see a benefit if you're running a lot of tenants in a cluster. If you're running, you know, five five to 10 tenants or something, I don't know what the average mid-year cluster tenant size is, but... Uh, most people probably don't get to the point where this is a significant drain. Yeah, a lot of people choose to have all their metrics in a single tenant as well. Um, so they can run at a fairly high scale, but still have everything under the same tenant. Um, hmm. But even then you're saying that like something like 16,000 might, that still not make sense. Yeah, because I think in my experience, what you end up seeing is the stripes are to reduce contention, right? So if you have, you know, 16 threads uh, or 16 routines or whatever, go routines writing at a time or accessing at a time, then the chances of them colliding with 16,000 is like negligible, right? It's There's almost no chance, but the chances of them colliding with 1,000 is still pretty unlikely. So. You don't you don't get that much benefit. You get serious diminishing returns for for larger values of a stripe map. Yep. Do you have that commit? Now that you've taken it out. Uh, yeah. Because I'm curious as well. I remember. I think the TSDB stuff in Prometheus used to be in a different repository at some point. Yeah, um, it was in. Um... It's now in Prometheus Junkyard slash TSDB. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think we were just looking at the issues, at least in the box scrub, Prometheus box scrub, and, and they were moved. So I think those should be, should have been moved to Prometheus issues and PRs. Oh, so you're saying if I just switch this over... Oh, you're right. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, wait, no. This is just one massive... Uh... Oh.
cool. Um, <laughs> do we have any other discussion points? Anything, questions, anything to announce? Sounds like you know. I, um, we'll get a recording and then I'll upload it. Um, oh, right. Um, I was going to ask if uh, if Yushan can post results or like um, after you experiment with stripe size. Um, I think it's something we've sort of neglected for a while, but it could be a nice change of defaults, perhaps in Prometheus as well. Yeah, I, um, we also tuned, we just did yesterday, we dropped the, uh, hold on, what was the parameter? Uh, the block storage head chunks write buffer size bytes from four megabytes to one megabyte. Um, and that saved us quite a bit there as well. Um, I mean, we're running on NVMe drives, so the, the memory buffers, it's gonna depend on what you're writing to, right? But uh, for us, that was a, a really big benefit. We saw absolutely no change in performance, um, but we we dropped uh, about 30% of our heap. It's pretty solid. Oh, that's quite a lot. How about, uh, do you know how many tenants you run on a single ingester? Um, yeah, so on average, I think it was, active tenants was about 1,500 on a single per ingester. Ooh, that's quite a lot. Yeah, we have a, well, so this is our state cluster. So it's the, we're running fewer, we're running the same number of tenants, but with like each one is smaller than than in our production cluster. So mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think these setting changes will help production quite as much because uh, it'll, it should spread out across a larger number of ingesters. So each ingester might only have a, a few hundred uh, active tenants, but mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. It's, um, yeah, thanks for sharing. All right, folks. Thanks for joining everyone. Um, see you. See you next month. Thank you. Bye bye.